Hi, my name is Sarah Rush, and I'd like to talk to you today about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, EDS, in honor of Rare Disease Day 2013, which is February 28th. I won't have time to cover everything, but I'll try and do as much as I can. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disease that affects approximately 1 in 2,500 to 1 in 5,000 people, although the exact numbers are really hard to determine since it's actually largely underdiagnosed. Lots of people end up being diagnosed with, say, fibromyalgia or something because there's really just not enough awareness. There are six main types of EDS. The type I'm thought to have currently is hypermobility type with classical overlap and then I'm also being tested for vascular due to some signs and symptoms of it, but for now let's just say I have hypermobility. The hallmark of EDS is hyperflexibility, even if you don't have the hyperflexible type. Though, you have to be careful with that because you don't have to be crazy circus freak kind of hyperflexible to have EDS. For me, although I have the hyperflexible type, I'm not by any means circus kind of bendy. I mean, my fingers are crazy, my feet, toes, most things are, except my elbows are only moderately hyperflexible and my knees are barely hyperflexible, even though everything still dislocates. It just doesn't bend back as far without dislocating. For many years, I didn't even really know I was abnormal. I mean, okay, I knew I was abnormal, but I'm talking about EDS-wise. <laughs> My fingers were always crazy bendy, but everyone can do that, right? No. No, they can't. My point is, just because someone can't put their heels behind their neck doesn't mean they don't have EDS. Although, a lot of us can do that. <laughs> Another main characteristic of EDS is our skin. Very delicate, soft, often stretchy, but not as crazy as you might imagine. Some people, yes, it is though. <laughs> For me, mine's moderately stretchy. Like, I can pull it like that. So it's definitely stretchy. Very stretchy. But not, like, pull it off my face kind of stretchy. Bruising. My goodness, we bruise. Some people more than others again, but there's always some extent of extreme bruising from either spontaneous or at least minimal trauma, such as poking, or the lovely bruises that are already forming from me pulling my skin. Most people with EDS have very, very visible veins. Our skin is not only fragile, but it's see-through. Especially in vascular, but to a certain extent for everybody. You can see my veins in my forehead, in my chest, my legs, abdomen, feet, ankles. Yeah, pretty much everywhere. Scarring. That's another big thing in EDS. Um, again, to different degrees for everybody, but there's always some kind of really bad wound healing. More so in classical, but like I said, there's huge overlaps in all the types and there's always some sort of delayed wound healing. For example, personal story, when I was six years old, I was at my friend's house, long story short, I fell off the bunk bed and I fell and I hit my back on a, the heater that was attached to the baseboard and gashed my back open. and. I remember it not even really hurting, but I stood up and there's blood everywhere because easy bleeding is often a part of EDS too, and I just bled and bled and bled. I just remember being upset that I was bleeding onto my favorite outfit. I was taken to the doctors and they put one, maybe two stitches in it. I have an atrophic scar on my back now that's stretched out, so instead of being just like a little tiny cut like it was, now is this wider scar that looks like it was a much bigger cut than it actually was. But I really do love my skin. It's very soft. Except when it rips and scars. 
I sometimes love my skin. A lot of people with EDS also have problems controlling their blood temperature. Brain fog. A lot of people with EDS also have trouble controlling their body temperature. For me, usually I'm always cold, except sometimes I get really hot and get all flushed, but usually I'm always cold, except my room's really hot. Another big issue for a lot of us is brain fog. Basically, your brain feels foggy a lot of the time. It's hard to concentrate, hard to feel like you're present. It's just kind of a lack of clarity. Dislocations. A lot of dislocations. And subluxations. A subluxation is a partial dislocation. I wake up in the morning laying on my back because if I sleep any other way, I'm more prone to dislocating something in my sleep. I open my eyes and take a deep breath and just do a mental kind of checklist assessment of my body and try and figure out what's in, what's out before I try and stand up and fall over. <laughs> it depends on the day, but say maybe a shoulder, sometimes both, a few fingers, elbow kind of not quite right, knee not quite right, ankles either subluxed or shifted kind of, uh, sometimes jaw, occasional really fun mornings, maybe a rib or two. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the pain. It's something that I don't really talk about a lot to anyone unless it's a close friend or family member, but there's a lot of pain with EDS. It varies greatly depending on the person, depending on the type of EDS you have, but all types is um, very, very debilitating and painful. I mean, it's not really that hard to explain. <laughs> If you pop something out, it's going to be painful, even if it happens easily, even if it goes back fairly easily, which sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, it's, it's going to hurt. There's often a misconception, especially among some doctors, that it's really not a painful disease, it's just benign hyperflexibility, but that's... uh-uh. Nope. With EDS and other rare diseases, the symbol or the mascot is a zebra. The reason behind that is because there's an old phrase that doctors were taught when they first started med school that if you hear hoofbeats behind you, don't, ex don't expect to see a zebra. But the thing is, sometimes it is going to be a zebra. It's not always a horse, and that's why so many people who do have rare diseases get misdiagnosed for so many years because doctors are taught to see the horse, not the zebra. But sometimes it really is a zebra. A lot of EDSers also have something called POTS, or Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. I happen to be one of them. Basically, it's a condition where when you go from um, a laying or sitting down position to standing up, your heart rate jumps either 30 or more beats per minute causing dizziness, nausea, yeah, a lot of stuff. Basically, either you pass out or you almost pass out. All those faces you just saw are people that I've personally Facebooked, emailed, or asked if I could use their picture. Yes, this means I didn't just pull them off of Google. These are really the faces of people with EDS, and there's way, way more. But I can't get everybody, and also, because I'm me, I way procrastinated on this little video project and only asked them the day before, so... Because your symptoms with EDS can change so much from day to day, it makes it really hard to explain to people. For example, one day I could be on crutches because I had a really horrible knee dislocation, my legs all swelled up, and yeah, that actually happened last week. <laughs> Shortly after, maybe a few days later, I can walk on it again normally and all that stuff, and it's like, hey, wait a second, I thought you were injured, blah blah blah, and unfortunately sometimes leads to people thinking that you're faking. That's not really a very pleasant thing to have to deal with on top of very, very real pain and very real injuries. 
Ultimately, awareness is so important so that people get the proper diagnosis as they need. Growing up, I knew that I sprained stuff all the time. I knew that my joints popped. I didn't know that I was actually dislocating them or partially dislocating them. I knew that I was in a lot of pain and everybody thought I was crazy. <laughs> my family, yes, was very supportive, but what do you do with a kid that sprains her ankle at, at least once every two weeks pretty badly and always like, mommy, my wrists hurt, my legs hurt, like everything hurts, but like, what do you do? I was screened for everything from lupus to juvenile arthritis, but it turns out that it was EDS. I found out about EDS when I went to see an orthopedic surgeon about my shoulders because playing baseball, I, throwing, my shoulders were popping out all the time even though I didn't know it then. He asked me, Have you heard of Ehlers Danlos Syndrome? No. I was like 12 maybe? He said to go home, <laughs> google it, see if that sounds like something I might have and decide if I want to pursue a diagnosis with a different doctor because he's an orthopedic surgeon. So I did just that and I swear goosebumps everywhere. I just couldn't believe how much that described everything in my life. And that's when the quest for a proper diagnosis started and that was a long time ago. I am now 19 years old and was only officially diagnosed February 1st of this year, less than a month ago. So it's really important to me that uh, as few people as possible go through that because it is very, very hard. Not only is it physically dangerous, but on top of that, it's just the psychological factor too. I mean, growing up and people thinking that you're a hypochondriac or a drama queen or you just are klutzy, right? I mean, I always joked about it, I laughed it off, I was like the klutz out of my friends, and I mean, I probably am klutzy on top of EDS too, but it really is because my joints just fall out of socket. They really just do. I can go to point at something and my arm will go out. Like, if I do that, I don't know if you, how well you can hear that, but that's actually my shoulder partially dislocating right there. And usually it's a lot worse. <laughs> Some days are worse than others. I mean, to be honest, I miss a lot of things. Probably the thing I miss the most is softball. I played for 13 years pretty competitively. I really, I, re I always gave 110%, like, and I'm not even saying that as a good thing always. <laughs> Sometimes it really wasn't, but even when I was tired, had multiple dislocated joints, bruises everywhere, like, I really tried hard because I loved it. I really did. I was a catcher for most of, um, I guess, my career. Um, got moved to first base when I finally blew my knees. <laughs> uh, blew my shoulder. Yeah, then I quit. And I hate to say quit because I did not quit easily. I was told to quit so many times by doctors and just, that's too hard on your body, like, what are you doing, blah blah blah. So I joined wrestling too, wrestled on the on my high school team in grade 12. Yeah, that didn't go so fantastically, but I had the time of my life. So to the people who did believe me growing up and supported me, like my family and a select few friends, I really, really appreciate that. I'm gonna keep this G-rated so I'm not gonna comment. No, all joking aside, I... I try not to hold grudges, I really do, and for the most part I understand that people really didn't mean anything by it, they just didn't understand it, but the point is everyone has their own battle, so be kind to everybody. Okay, too much sitting up. Ugh. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've learned a little bit about EDS and about me, and just be kind to yourself, be kind to everyone around you, and Happy Rare Disease Day! <laughs>